Okay, so we are uh, going to be talking today, discussing mycotoxins and organic acid testing, a dynamic duo for getting to the bottom of a large number of neuropsychiatric disorders. So it's with this particular combination of testing, we're looking at uh, new avenues for, for treating disease that really were not available any time in the past. So this is a very uh, exciting uh, discovery how the combination of these uh, tests is greatly enhances the overall ability to diagnose and treat a wide variety of diseases. And I'll also be talking about a, a, a new uh, therapy for uh, autism that uh, may really change uh, for the the uh, type of uh, treatment that is available uh, for for uh, treating autism. So mycotoxins are small molecules that are produced by mold, and one of the places mold is commonly found is in any place that's subject to uh, high humidity or dampness or uh, or uh, is exposed to water. One of the most dramatic cases that was on the TV program, Forensic File, a couple had a $10 million mansion and their the water line to their ice maker of the refrigerator got a leak. And because it wasn't treated right away, the mold spread through the whole house and now they're left with the uh, the probability they'll just have to bulldoze down their $10 million mansion. So Clorox, as you see in the picture, is, or bleach is one of the best ways of killing mold about a one to 10 dilution of Clorox is used. You have to be extremely careful because you can breathe this in. And once you breathe it in, it could get in your lungs or you can bring it into your respiratory tract and it gets into your intestinal tract and it colonizes. So there's a, a lot of bad things can happen. So you have to be very, very careful to know what you're doing and take precautions for treating mold. So in addition to the household, mold is also commonly found in uh, contaminated food. And uh, so cereals are one of the biggest sources of mold contamination, wheat, rye, barley, rice, corn. These are all big uh, sources of mold contamination. So if there's smaller amounts of mold, it may not be uh, very easy to determine that mold is there when it's present in extremely high quantities. Anybody can see it. Like if you have a big chunk of uh, green on your bread, well, that is a pretty good sign. It's moldy, but when it first uh, when it first occurs, it may be a very small amount and may be uh, difficult to determine. So you can eat these things, uh, and the mycotoxins, uh, the molecules, the toxic molecules produced by the by the mold will uh, get into your body and sometimes the organism uh, producing them, especially with the case of aspergillus, may uh, colonize your intestinal tract. And in the worst case scenario, the colonization goes out from the intestinal tract and the, uh, the mold could spread through your whole body, especially if you have impaired immunity. So the uh, organic acid test and the mycotoxin test can be done on the same urine sample. Uh, the mycotoxin test uses a, te a technology called uh, liquid chromatography with double mass spectrometry, uh, which which is actually there's three quadrupoles in the mass spectrometer that make this the best technology available for the 
for the detection of these mycotoxins. So the uh, a quick overview of mass spectrometry is that the molecule is ionized and goes through a series of what are called quadrupoles or shorthand as quads. And by going through a series of these quads, it makes the detection system extremely sensitive and extremely accurate because what you're doing, you're testing a fragment of a fragment and, and if two different molecules could have a, a common fragment, but there's very few molecules that will have the same exact fragment of a fragment. So that's what makes the triple quadrupole mass spectrometry so uh, sensitive and, and uh, accurate. So mycotoxins are some of the most prevalent toxins in the environment. They're extremely toxic. A number of countries uh, in the Middle East uh, have prepared them for use in uh, biological warfare. These metabolites are produced by the fungi or mold. So fungi and mold are really synonyms. And, and uh, these organisms can infest buildings, your, your vehicles, and your food stuff. So all of these things. So virtually anything, almost anything on earth can be contaminated. Uh, a majority of these mycotoxin exposures are through food ingestion or airborne exposure. In the uh, European Union, 20% of all grains harvested have been found to be contaminated with mycotoxins. Uh, but but most of the time, the processing methods for the food, like heating, is not destroying or removing these mycotoxins. Another thing is, which some people don't realize, even organic food could be contaminated with mycotoxins. So the term organic means that the food has not been exposed to uh, various chemicals like like pesticides and herbicides, but the, um, the, the name organic does not mean it's not contaminated with mycotoxins. That's a completely different story. So why is this LC-MS-MS so useful? So first of all, the extraction procedure re removes many of the impurities that that are present in the sample, the urine sample. And, and there can be interferences by other substances that are in the extract. Even though you remove some of these uh, uh, interfering materials, or, uh, some of the materials can cause what is called ion suppression. So to overcome this particular problem, the Great Plains Laboratory uses uh, isotoped labeled mycotoxins as a control that have heavy atom isotopes that can be distinguished from the mycotoxins present in the patient's urine. By using these heavy atom isotope labeled compounds, it, it uh, makes a correction for interferences. In addition, so many of the interferences are removed by high performance liquid chromatography that separates the molecules based on their chemical characteristics. And then in addition, the mass spectrometry uh, measures a secondary fragment of the first ion fragment and making this uh, extremely unlikely. So the today the LCMSMS would be considered by virtually uh, any reputable uh, scientists as the the uh, the best testing method for uh, measuring these kind of uh, trace toxic uh, materials that we're exposed to. Uh, so these are some of the common mycotoxins tested in the urine. Uh, Great Plains is going to be testing uh, all of them shortly. 
uh, in, in a short period of time. But the most important thing is we're, we're checking some of the most predominant mycotoxins right now. This shows a sample report of the mycotoxin test with a substance that's common in corn. Uh, 10 people died in Texas when they ate uh, corn that was contaminated with this particular mold from a substance called fusarium. And, and uh, uh, here is the uh, patient's value. And right now, the Great Plains shows a uh, a typical range for positive results because what we found, most of these mycotoxins are present at a zero concentration in normal individuals with the exception of the okra toxin A. Uh, a lot of normal people have very small amounts of okra toxin A, but ziarolinone has um, uh, very few normal people are positive for this. So okra toxin A is by far the most common uh, mycotoxin. Uh, you see it has this complex of uh, ring structures, a very complicated molecule that's still considered a small molecule, molecular weight of about 600. Okra toxin A is, can be found as many mycotoxins in both food and water damaged buildings. By the way, the big thing missing from here is vehicles as well. So your car can have it. I am sure after being on many airlines <coughs> that many of the air systems on the airlines are probably also contaminated with, uh, with mold as well. So I never, turn on the air source when I'm on one of these planes because immediately after I do, I'll start to have an allergic uh, reaction to the uh, dust and mold in the uh, airline vents. Uh, the okra toxin A is extremely toxic uh, to the kidney. It can cause complete kidney damage and, uh, and even death by impairment of the kidney function can cause immune suppression. It is carcinogenic uh, and it forms complexes with the uh, guanine residue on the uh, DNA. It can cause a variety of neurologic symptoms. So we've seen this particular mycotoxin in in a, a wide range of neurologic diseases, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Parkinson's uh, disease, Alzheimer's uh, disease. Uh, what's fascinating about this is that the toxin appears more toxic to males than females. And recently, a research group has, has uh, hypothesized that the okra toxin A may be a major cause of autism and, and may also account for the reason why uh, there's about a four to five ratio of males to females in, uh, in uh, people with autism. So okra toxin A is by far the most common mycotoxin uh, in urine. This is a table that shows the, the uh, different uh, mycotoxins that are, that are present with different molds or fungus. So the, the genus is of the mold or fungus is given by a capital letter. So uh, in this case, it, it is asp uh, aspergillus ochraceus and uh, carbonarius, and it's likely there are many other uh, aspergillus species that also produce okra toxin A. And, uh, and in addition, uh, penicillium, which is the mold from which the discovery of antibiotics was made, penicillin, penicillium mold also produces okra toxin A. Uh, some of the mycotoxins are also present in poisonous mushrooms as well. 
mold exposure can cause uh, sneezing and allergic reactions. Uh, you can do IgE testing. The Great Plains Laboratory performs IgE testing for mold. Uh, so the immune system toxicity is probably due to the mycotoxins. Uh, a direct toxic effect of the mycotoxins, not due to the uh, IgE allergies. Uh, the, the molds can cause neurologic symptoms, endocrine disruption, like uh, causing the uh, young girls to develop breast, or it could cause impairment of uh, fertility. So any women who are having fertility problems, this is a a potential area to look at. It can cause cardiovascular symptoms, psychiatric symptoms, uh, severe gastrointestinal distress and bleeding, especially nose bleeding is a common symptom of uh, mold exposure. Uh, so what, you, what can you do about it? So what's the treatment? The most important treatment, number one, is to remove environmental uh, contamination or drastically contaminated foods. The difficulty is that some foods could be contaminated, but they may not be contaminated enough so that it's visible, but still could be co contaminated enough to cause health problems. And as a result of this, the Department of Agriculture and FDA frequently require that foods uh, be tested, but undoubtedly, Many of these foods uh, uh, make it through that are contaminated because it's impossible to test all food. So one of the most important things is that most of these mycotoxins come, can come either from food or the environment. And, and so uh, since it's difficult to test foods uh, directly, I would always recommend to have an expert uh, check your environment to make sure you don't have mold in your uh, in your house or apartment or or uh, or in your car for that matter. Uh, the next most important thing, which is sometimes omitted, is the fact that uh, that the aspergillus, especially, can can colonize the GI tract and sometimes even cause a systemic infection where it passes uh, throughout your, your body. And I'll be talking about specific antifungal drugs a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, so these first two things are very important. And I would say my impression is that, that the antifungal treatment is one of the treatments that has been overlooked I would say by a, a lot of people who are uh, doing treatments for uh, mold contamination. So some of the other things can do are to help to get rid of the mycotoxins. But remember, the, these things only get rid of the current mycotoxins. If you have mycotoxins being produced by mold that's in your intestinal tract, it won't, these other things to get rid of the mycotoxins are only gonna do uh, limited, uh, are only gonna yield limited benefits because the mycotoxin is, continues to produce, the mold continues to produce new mycotoxins in the intestinal tract. So uh, oral or IV glutathione, uh, many of the mycotoxins may, uh, bind to glutathione, uh, either the parent mycotoxin or their metabolites. Uh, chlorophyllin is also helpful. Cholestyramine is a product that helps to uh, prevent any mycotoxins that are being excreted in the bile uh, into the intestinal tract. Uh, it helps to prevent them from being reabsorbed back into the body. This is a prescription medication. Uh, two to four grams a day are typically used for this. Uh, many probiotics have been found to be helpful. 
uh, in, in uh, killing gastrointestinal mold. Uh, clay has been useful. Uh, for one of the common products is Novacil and uh, chlorella have also been helpful. Uh, this is a, a, a case study of a water damaged uh, house. Uh, the infant you can see has this severe rash and the father's fingerprints can be seen on the back of the infant. Uh, the father had uh, problems with cough because these things can can um, can sometimes get uh, be growing in the lungs or they can affect the lungs even if the organism is not colonized. They can cause throat irritation, headaches, sinus problems, severe fatigue, sleepiness, uh, memory loss, decreased concentration. I mentioned nosebleeds, decreased uh, uh, libido, uh, hair loss, shortness of breath. And so in this family, uh, the father had a whole range of neurologic and psychiatric simple symptoms like simple and choice reaction time, impaired balance with the eyes open and closed. So there's like um, uh, standards for each of these particular uh, uh, tests. The abnormal right and left uh, color vision uh, visual field performance. So they have some of these things that you can look at under the on the internet. And if your uh, ability to pick out different uh, visual contrast is impaired, this could be a, a confirmation of the um, of the um, problems with uh, with uh, the mold affecting uh, your brain. Abnormal smell score. Some of you may have may have heard on the news that impaired smell is a uh, a common symptom with beginning alzheimer's disease and and now of course uh dr bredesen has treated a number of people with mold problems and so he talks now about inhalational alzheimer's disease so the alzheimer's is being caused by the exposure to the mold in addition he had a lot of problems with um, mood and depression. The mother had virtually all the same kinds of symptoms as well. Uh, and the son had many of the same symptoms, but in addition, uh, they were the teachers had noticed decreased attention in the classroom. Even the family do dog was affected. Uh, so the pet dog had 72 skin lesions uh, most of which are called lipomas. When I talked to a, 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 a local veterinarian, she said these are extremely common in dogs. And what I suspect, the main source of these are contaminated pet food. Uh, and, and, and a nice study was down, done in Brazil in which they found virtually all the pet food was contaminated whether it was the bargain basement variety or the or the more expensive so-called high quality, virtually all of the pet food was contaminated and individuals said they actually were reports of moldy dog food being sent back to the manufacturer and they just dump it back into a new bag and then uh, and and uh, and then put a new expiration date. So if you really want to give good food for your dog, the best thing would be to give your dog table scraps. Uh, the newborn had these these uh, dark spots called cafe au lait spots that are associated with uh, uh, neurofibromatosis, which is one of the conditions that's commonly associated with autism. Uh, and these are the lipomas on the abdomen of the dog. Uh, they did uh, testing for for uh, different uh, molds. Uh, one of the classes is called trichothecenes. Uh, aflatoxins are a common one that can be found in the environment or food. One of the common sources was was peanuts and peanut butter because peanuts grow 
under the under the ground, they're more likely to get uh, contamination. And the one I mentioned, okra toxin. So the father had high amounts of uh, okra toxin in the uh, urine and his nasal secretions. The mother also had high amounts of okra toxin. The daughter had even higher uh, amounts. This was the uh, the uh, the daughter and the son also had high amounts. Uh, even the mother's breast milk had detectable okra toxin, and uh, the dog was one of the most uh, contaminated. And the fat tumors in the dog also had high amounts of of uh, okra toxin. Uh, it's been found that the okra toxin A is toxic to the hippocampal cells. The hippocampus is the area of the brain that's associated with storing memory. So this is one of the reasons why uh, okra toxin and other molds may be associated with Alzheimer's disease. So a researcher at the University of California, Dale Bredesen, is doing pioneering working and treating Alzheimer's disease and the mycotoxins are one of the uh, underlying causes. So this is one of his case studies, 52 year old woman, two year history of cognitive the decline, being unable to do simple uh, arithmetic. Uh, her cognitive decline had been preceded by stress, employment changes, menopause, and uh, uh, some general anesthesia. She had developed a simple childlike affect. Her, her MRI brain scan showed cerebral and cerebellar atrophy, which are commonly found in uh, Alzheimer's. A PET scan showed the presence of amyloid, an abnormal substance present in the brain. Uh, and what her children noticed was her symptoms uh, tended to worsen uh, uh, when she went back home. So when she was traveling, she seemed to be much healthier, but when she went back home, and so the reason was because there were all kinds of mold in her house, stachybotrys, penicillium, and aspergillus. Uh, they also did some tests of various proteins and found that they were very abnormal as well. Uh, I am not sure that these protein measurements are needed as long as you're measuring the, uh, the source of the uh, mycotoxin, which a com the most common source is aspergillus, and measuring the mycotoxins, those, those are some of the more important things in my mind. Uh, she was treated with an anti-mold therapy and she began to show some improvement in, 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 in addition to uh, improvement some of these uh, proteins in the serum. So now I want to talk about how organic acid testing has greatly increased the, the use of mycotoxins uh, and the mycotoxin test and how it's uh, going to dramatically alter the, the, uh, the, the treatment of people with mold. So first of all, uh, these mold products from aspergillus were documented uh, almost, what is it? Uh, uh, about 80 years ago in the uh, uh, Japanese uh, scientific journal that these molds from aspergillus, these compounds uh, that contain furans are common uh, products of mold. Uh, this is one of the products that is on the organic acid test, 2,5-furan dicarboxylic acid. Uh, and so all of these are from aspergillus species, and the number on the, orga the organic acid test has each of the markers numbered. Numbers two, four, and five are those derived from the uh, aspergillus. Uh, this is the furan ring, <clears throat> and 
attached to the furan ring are two carboxylic acids. So that's why the name is dicarboxylic. Uh, this is a slightly modified furan compound and that has a hydroxymethyl group here and the carboxylic acid. So it's called 5-hydroxymethyl 2-furan carboxylic acid. And this is the, the structure of another furan compound in which the glycine has been added. So glycine is a human addition to the exposure to the fungus. So the fungus or mold uh, produces these uh, furan compounds and then glycine is added to them uh, to detoxify them. And, and so what, this could be one of the factors in mold detoxification would be uh, genetic variants in the enzymes that detoxify uh, mold toxins or mycotoxins by the addition of glycine. So glycine combines, the amino group of glycine combines with the carboxylic acid of furoic acid to form the furan carbonyl glycine. So the, the first paper of which I'm uh, aware was my publication in 2000 in, uh, on assessment of antifungal drug therapy in uh, autism using GCMS in the journal Clinical Practice of Alternative Medicine. Uh, you can get a copy of this from the Great Plains uh, uh, website if you want the entire article and want to download it. And, and this is table one from the paper. And, and uh, these are the, the toxins that are associated with aspergillus. Uh, the second one, hydroxymethyl, to ferroic acid. Uh, and one of the most important things is uh, you see the, the average uh, normal in, uh, in normal people, 49 and a half, the average in autism, 135. The t-test shows a, uh, a very strong statistical probability that this is not due to chance, only one chance in 100, and the, the mean value in autism was 2.7 times higher than in uh, normal controls. Uh, the same thing with the furan 2,5 dicarboxylic acid, the, the, um, the values in autism was 1.83 times higher. Um, and furan carbonyl glycine uh, was also twice as high in the autism group. But in addition, what's interesting is uh, that with the latest research, I find that tartaric acid is a major product of, of aspergillus. And so uh, it is also much higher in the group with uh, autism. And what I suspect is that initially I, th I, I was inclined to think that the tartaric acid was due to candida, but after looking at recent publications, the recent publications in that indicate that aspergillus is a very uh, big producer of, of, um, of tartaric acid and also uh, oxalic acid. And so now, I'm inclined to think this may be uh, the reason that these particular compounds were uh, elevated in uh, autism and in other uh, neuropsychiatric disorders as well. Uh, and then this is a uh, just a, a, a close-up of the previous data. And then the next thing I did was compared the before and after values of the of these different compounds after antifungal therapy with nystatin. So this 5-hydroxymethyl-2-ferroic 
uh, dropped uh, 56% after uh, after 10 days of nystatin therapy. The furan dicarboxylic dropped 63%. Uh, the tartaric acid, 29%. The furan carbonylglycine, 24%. And again, this is a a um, a, a blow up of the previous slide. The thing that's mo that's so important about this particular data is that what it indicates is that uh, this mold was uh, was at least a a large part of it was predominantly in the intestinal tract. And the reasoning goes like this. Uh, nystatin is a drug that is not absorbed from the intestinal tract. So if nystatin decreased the value of these compounds produced by uh, aspergillus, what it indicates is that the aspergillus was, was uh, to a large extent in the intestinal tract. Uh, it's still possible that aspergillus had spread further than the intestinal tract but if it had, uh, nystatin would not be able to affect it. Uh, this is a case study of a 37-year-old uh, a female with uh, fibromyalgia. She has chronic uh, fatigue and fibromyalgia. It's common for people with either of the illnesses to have symptoms of the other. The brain spec chance, so diminished blood flow especially to the temporal uh, lobes of the brain. If she drank uh, Coke that has phosphates in it or other colas, their symptoms became much worse because probably because of the, the phosphates. And what's very interesting is the follow-up uh, treatment. Uh, when you look at the, the markers that uh, are associated with aspergillus. She, <coughs> after the nystatin treatment, she had uh, virtually a uh, hundred percent eradication of the hydroxymethylfuroic, about a ninety-nine percent reduction in furan dicarboxylic, and a similar reduction in tartaric acid with a marked reduction and symptoms. So a, a recent uh, study shows that other uh, uh, fungal mycotoxins are associated with Parkinson's disease. And, and I think this, this was interesting because the author was one who was very skeptical that uh, uh, mycotoxins could have uh, any effect on on the the brain, but after she was in a hurricane uh, damaged uh, building, uh, she developed some symptoms herself. Uh, this is a, a case of an individual with Parkinson's disease, tremors and difficulty uh, walking, high amounts of markers two, uh, four but uh, not five. So, so sometimes we see, um, it's most common to see markers two and four together, but occasionally you will see individuals with all three. Uh, in addition, the patient had high tartaric acid, which based on the latest information may also be an aspergillus, pre predominantly from aspergillus. Uh, so a close-up um, the way they, the data on the organic acid is, is uh, shown, if the value is above the upper limit of normal, uh, the, the graph shifts and the a red diamond is uh, plotted on the graph to give you some idea of the level of, um, of elevation. Here's a second case of a, a person with Parkinson's disease, again, uh, with high amounts of the furan compounds two and four, uh, 
but uh, but not five. Uh, and this is the oxalate value. So what we've seen is extremely common if the person has high aspergillus markers to also have uh, the high amounts of the oxalic acid. Uh, this patient also had the who had high amounts of the aspergillus markers had extremely high amounts of okra toxin A. You can see uh, this is the patient's values, 53, an extremely high value. And, and uh, even in the interpretation, uh, uh, indicating that uh, other scientific studies have shown a connection with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. The, the, the current uh, graph on the mycotoxin test shows typical positive values. So uh, most, the okra toxin is the only mycotoxin that we find uh, small amounts of this in some normal people, uh, but the, the, the highest level of normal would probably be around one or two. So a person with a value of 53 would be at least 25 times the normal level. Uh, here's an individual with bipolar depression, and you see extremely high amounts of, of all of these uh, uh, aspergillus markers in, in this particular individual. So uh, the first one, number two, uh, five times, more than five times the upper limit of normal. Uh, this one about eight times the upper limit of normal, six times the upper limit of normal for number five. There's also an additional compound, number nine, that is due to another uh, uh, mold uh, product, and but we don't have time to deal with that. Uh, today in detail. So the same person with bipolar depression had high amounts of oxalic acid uh, and also high lactic acid. So it's possible that the mold was due, was causing all of these abnormal biochemical reactions. Uh, here's a case of a child, a four-year-old with autism. The, the, the aspergillus marker 46 times the upper limit of normal. Uh, the other one, 44 times the upper uh, limit of normal. So extremely high values have been seen in some of the children with autism. In addition, his oxalic acid was sky high. Uh, and the connection with autism was made a number of uh, years ago, and there have been some publications uh, since then. Uh, the study we had done at Great Plains showed that uh, oxalic acid in uh, autism reached gigantic values, similar to the uh, the child on the on the previous slide. This one, so 793, he would be uh, he would be actually off scale here, uh, whereas normal children have a much lower values. So. So indirectly, I think this chart may indicate that uh, that the uh, mycotoxins and aspergillus may be one of the most important factors uh, in autism. When you do a, a paired T-test, uh, oh, it's not a paired T-test, just an overall T-test, the probability is less than uh, one in a quadrillion that these results could be due to chance. So that same four-year-old was tested and found to have high amounts of okra toxin A. Uh, this is a very important case study. This that uh, uh, was uh, uh, reported, first reported by um, uh, Dr. Uh, Sidney Baker at the MAPS, uh, the last MAPS conference. And 
this child really represents one of the fastest recoveries from severe autism that I'm aware of. So the baseline for the child was 55. And after treatment with a, uh, a particular antifungal drug that is supposed to be most useful for aspergillus, uh, it is it is it is called itraconazole. After treatment with itraconazole, the amount of the mold marker drops 97 and a half percent. The other compound dropped 99 percent, and the furan carbonylglycine dropped 37 percent, and the uh, yeast marker arabinose dropped 66 percent. So. Uh, as I mentioned, probably the fastest recorded uh, recovery from uh, autism. Uh, the child did have several severe Herxheimer reaction during the treatment with itraconazole, and itraconazole is the preferred uh, drug for aspergillus treatment. Uh, the child who had impaired speech uh, and uh, a zombie-like affect, and and uh, after after uh, after treatment, he was an, uh, every aspect of the child uh, was normal. He, he at the age of three, he was saying, told his father, "You don't need to worry about me, Dad. I'm completely recovered now." Uh, this is the case of a 74-year-old woman with severe cognitive impairment. Uh, uh, appearing to be uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, very high amounts of these uh, uh, furan uh, compounds, uh, and uh, and she also had other uh, compounds that are associated with other uh, species of mold as as well. Number nine is a. Uh, uh, a kind of uh, mold called fusarium. Uh, when when the woman was tested, she had high amounts of uh, aflatoxin and ocratoxin, which are both metabolites produced by Aspergillus fungus. Uh, this is another case of uh, a very impaired elderly person and the furan uh, glycine conjugate was 400 times the upper limit of normal. The woman had lost all spontaneous speech. She would, so she would never initiate any speech. The only thing is that she would occasionally answer to questions. She had severe anorexia depression and a zombie-like affect. Uh, this is the uh, case of a, uh, a woman with very severe muscle pain uh, and uh, again, high amounts of the uh, compounds associated with aspergillus as well as high amounts of tartaric acid as well. And uh, and she had uh, very elevated oxalates as well, which were probably the source of the muscle pain. Uh, what she found in this case, if she ate any foods that containing soy, which, are, which were one of the foods highest in oxalates, the pain became even more uh, severe. This was the case of a six-year-old girl with severe aggression, uh, attacking other children in the kindergarten with very odd behavior, perhaps uh, along the lines of, of autism and extremely high amounts of, of, the, of the Aspergillus markers, uh, values that were um, about uh, 35 times the uh, upper limit of normal, and she also had high amounts of the uh, other uh, compound that's associated with a different mold as well, the fusarium. 
uh, she also had extremely high amounts of oxalates. So oxalate crystals are common in aspergillus. This is a, a slide uh, of aspergillus on a petri plate showing high amounts of these uh, oxalate crystals forming uh, in the mold itself. Uh, these oxalate crystals are formed on uh, uh, when mold is growing on uh, trees, like in the forest. And there have been uh, a number of cases of uh, aspergillus affecting the, uh, the gastrointestinal tract. And it's also been found that the uh, calcium oxalate uh, crystals being deposited uh, in, in the, the person are very uh, commonly associated with the uh, aspergillus. And uh, this is an individual who had a, uh, a foot uh, that was appearing to be, have gangrene when in effect it was the, the foot was just severely um, infected with the uh, aspergillus. And so there was no other reason to think he had high oxalates. So the conclusion of the physicians is it was due to the aspergillus. And in this individual, unfortunately, it was so severe that the foot was uh, amputated. It was also noted that the man was demented, uh, which from the previous slides you see is a common uh, problem with due to the high amounts of the uh, okra toxin produced by aspergillus. So a, a, um, a recent a uh, biochemistry article found that organic acid production was common by different uh, fungi, and two of these are very commonly produced by aspergillus. So remember, the A, the capital A, is just an abbreviation uh, which stands for aspergillus. So both oxalates and tartaric acid were major organic acids produced by aspergillus. Uh, so the benefits of doing the organic acid and mycotoxin testing together are that the markers of the most common mold genus aspergillus are found uh, on the urine organic acid as the three uh, furian compounds. Almost 100% of all urine samples that are positive for these furans by organic acid testing are positive for okra toxin A. In the event that they were not, if the person had okra toxin A positive, but not the furans, what this may, this is a likely, uh, a likely scenario that the, that the mycotoxins are not, uh, are, are not colonizing the intestinal tract and that they're either from the, uh, the food or the environment. Uh, a positive furan test, meaning values above the normal range, indicates likely uh, gastrointestinal colonization will likely respond favorably to antifungal therapy. Uh, and you could use the organic acid test to follow up on the progress of getting rid of the uh, colonization. Um, treatment of the aspergillus mycotoxins will not be successful unless the underlying source of the mycotoxins is eliminated. And, and what I suspect is that I've heard many physicians talk about how difficult uh, mycotoxins are to get rid of. I think the main reason is that this uh, there hasn't been sufficient focus on colonization of the gastrointestinal tract and using antifungal therapy to get rid of the, of the aspergillus in the GI tract first. If the person only focuses on removing the mycotoxins and the aspergillus is growing like crazy 
it doesn't matter how much clay or charcoal or whatever else you're giving the patient because it will never go away as long as the aspergillus is growing in the intestine and continuing to produce new mycotoxins. But the mycotoxin test is still needed for other uh, non-aspergillus molds that are not detected by the organic acid test. So, uh, so what are some of the antifungal treatments that are helpful? Uh, the previous slide indicates that itraconazole is a systemic drug that is the drug of choice for oral treatment of aspergillus. This was the drug that was used by Dr. Baker for getting the very rapid reversal of autism in his patient. This is some of the dosing information. Um, by putting this up here, and this is for the itraconazole, I don't want to say that this is the only treatment, uh, uh, but it is the, it has been emphasized as being a preferred treatment. It doesn't mean that other treatments won't work. For example, my first paper back in 2000 showed that nystatin had some effectiveness in getting rid of the uh, aspergillus. So for an adult, uh, this is for a person with a fairly severe aspergillus, 200 milligrams, three times a day for the first three days, uh, maintained 200 milligrams orally once or twice a day for about three months. This is a person who has, you know, a really uh, uh, severe uh, aspergillus infection. Uh, the pediatric recommendation, and you can note that this is for five years or older, uh, and, you know, but many of the kids with autism are younger. So uh, you're, you're, you, the physician is taking the is 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 working with kids younger than this is taking a little bit of a risk. Although if you give these for short periods of time, they're they're usually not highly toxic. It's most of the toxicity of these drugs is when you uh, continue the treatment for long periods of time. So uh, in this case, two and a half milligrams per kilo per kilogram of body weight, two and a half milligrams uh, per kilo. So if the child weighed um, 10 kilos, it would be 25 milligrams uh, twice a day. Get You can do it as an oral uh, solution. And they're, and they're indicating a duration of therapy, seven to 14 days. So uh, in summarizing, a combination of tests of organic acids and mycotoxins have shed a bright light on a wide range of neuropsychiatric diseases, including autism, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, fibromyalgia, and Alzheimer's disease. The most common markers of aspergillus that indicate colonization are on the organic acid test, the mycotoxin urine test at Great Plains can be done on the same urine, checks for common aspergillus mycotoxins and many other uh, mycotoxins as well. Thank you all for attending. Remember, the, the presentation will be archived. And remember, we have about 100, maybe it's 200, of these presentations that are extremely uh, useful uh, for your health. And uh, they're all available at no charge on the Great Plains website. You can just go, you just go to the home page, scroll down, and you can do a search for any topic or any particular speaker that you want to uh, uh, talk to. So thank you all very much for for attending. And, uh, and if you enjoyed this, please uh, tell your friends and neighbors who may have health issues that these options are available. 
and uh, and uh, share with them that this will be available uh, online and, and, and in an archive form. So thank you all very much. Bye now.